a lady who doesn't appreciate fast drivers, <laughs> but she is truly an inspiration. Ruth Gordon, playwright, author, uh, Academy and Emmy award-winning actress, and now a novelist at the pinnacle of her career at age 85. How are you, Ruth? I'm great, and I'm glad you didn't run into I'm me. I'm glad I didn't, How too. How about that? I yeah. Know. Well, anyhow. Shady Lady is the name of the book, and it is... Uh, captured my attention all day yesterday, but I have to tell you something. This Winona Lloyd you write about, she is a shady lady. I was shocked, Ruth Gordon. Yes. Well, it doesn't hurt you to be shocked. I think it's kind of enjoyable, don't you, uh, to well, be shocked? To be shocked, yeah. Yes. And also yes. the fact that this all takes place around the 20s. Yes. Such a glamorous time. Such a glamorous time. And I think that's the reason that start, uh, started me to write it, because, you know, nowadays, uh, trouble, trouble, trouble. And uh, I suppose there was trouble in the 20s, but everybody kept it under their hat. You didn't talk about it. Everybody was good looking and rich and sexy, and if you weren't, you stayed home, because whoever <laughs> wanted to see people like that, you know? And I wanted to bring all that back. And it is a sexy book, and it's a, it's a deep book, too, because it's somebody who early on found out what they wanted to do, how to use their beauty, how to use their sex appeal, and how to get somewhere. And that's very important. And that's like me, except I have talent. And Winona Lloyd and Shady Lady didn't have talent. She just had fabulous beauty and fabulous sex appeal. Th those aren't too bad things They're to not have, too bad. by the way. And also a sense of street smarts. I mean, here is a Midwestern girl who ends up finding her way through Chicago all the way to New York to the Ziegfeld Follies. Yes. And to Ziegfeld's bed. I know. In the yes. apartment, you know, that was a that was a kind of a great coming along. And you know what I think is fascinating? In those days, no television, not even really uh, any way to see the pictures of those people. I guess a few magazines you turned the pages, and there was beautiful Ziegfeld Follies girl. But in Shady Lady, this Winona Lloyd comes via being born in Glorieta, mm -hmm. New Mexico, which is just a little garage and two, three houses that I used to see when I came from California on Super Chief. And you'd see this little Glorieta. Oh, what a name. What a name. Must be something beautiful. Nothing but a garage, two houses. So then she and her mother moved to Winona, Minnesota. And that's a one-night stand that I played in the old days. And it was such a pretty place, so pretty. It was like, it was like beautiful wallpaper, white houses, green trees, roses. Oh, it was just beautiful. And, but Winona Lloyd wanted to get out of there because she said, Mama, uh, I, don't, I don't want to be good. You're good. I don't want to be good. I don't want to be like you, Mama. I want to go out and be, I want to be kind of fast, I guess mm. the word was then. And she said, you like to be known as making the best sponge cake in all Winona, Minnesota. I don't give a damn about sponge cake. I hope I never know how to make it. And so she went off. She went to Chicago. She met a fella. And then she met another fella. And, boo -boo 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 -boo. and then she went to New York. And it all happened great. Were the Ziegfeld girls all fast? Ladies? I hope so. You could <laughs> not be fast with those beautiful looks. And you see, there was a thing in those days that we don't have now, that a showgirl. Winona Lloyd was a showgirl. See, they have chorus girls. Now chorus girls are full of talent. They must sing, they must dance, they must do little parts even. But a showgirl just came on so beautiful. Most beautiful figures, most beautiful clothes. Maybe a fur slung over like this. Maybe nothing slung over here. <laughs> but you don't know. There were showgirls, and that's all they had to do. And that was uh, what was great about Winona Lloyd. And all the other girls were like it. And what I think is marvelous, see, they come from all different little places. Winona, Minnesota. Now, how did she know about Ziegfeld Follies? Jessie Reed was a great Texas beauty, some little town in Texas. And then Pittsburgh and all over places, places, but they knew the big do was New York. Well, how do you, when you set out to write your first fiction, yes. and you set it this way around a, a lady who ends up becoming a Ziegfeld girl, is this, did you draw any of this from your own knowledge, Ruth, your own background? Oh, you betcha. How I much of it? Well, a whole lot of it because, you know, I was around in those days, and I wasn't a, in the Ziegfeld Follies. I would have gone if I had had the looks, but I was in plays, and uh, I knew a lot of them, and I knew one. I won't say her name, but she was one of the famous ones. She had wonderful red hair, terrific figure, and there was a great big 
French blue velvet curtain on the stage of the New Amsterdam Theatre, the curtain, and it began, say, on this side, and Winona Lloyd came on, and the curtain covered her over here, but right beginning with her waist, and I won't say you know what, down to the ground, and she pulled the curtain across the stage, and this really happened, and this girl, oh, she was terrific. Now, I lost track of her about four or five years. She disappeared out of the Follies, mm -hmm. and one day I'm in London, and I'm in the Savoy Hotel uh, uh, ladies' room, and I'm coming out of there, and all of a sudden, this red-haired beauty, dazzling, came toward me, and she said, I'm going straight, I'm going straight, I'm going straight, I'm going straight, I'm going straight. Mm -hmm. How are you? And she was married to Sir So and So, whose name I won't mention either. But don't you love that warning me not to tip off anything of the old days? Isn't that great? The old days, the crash of the stock market, yeah. prohibition. You say slinky ladies in a fast life. What were you doing in the twenties? Well, I was slinking around too, <laughs> but in plays. And I had uh, I had a great good time. And prohibition kind of came in and gave us all the idea it was all right to break laws. Because mm -hmm. everybody, you see, b brought a bottle of liquor. So I knew one actress had a, a flask made of gold, solid gold, solid gold flask, and she just had it in there. So if it was all right to do that, probably it was all right to sleep with the fellas, probably it was all right to do anything you wanted to do. And then the crash came, and of course, uh, <clears throat> I was lucky, because I had a great friend who had told me there was going to be trouble and to sell all my stocks. And it was crazy. I didn't even know all my stocks. You'd go to a whist party, a bridge party, and uh, somebody would say, uh, let's see, I think uh, three, uh, three no Trump. Uh, say, have you had Eidegen Schilt? And I'd say, uh, pass. No, what's Eidegen Schilt? <laughs> well, it's going wide up. Uh, what? No, I passed it. And they're going to uh, go way up. And I bought Eidegen Schilt. And I sold Eidegen Schilt. And if you ask me what Eidegen Schilt is, I'd say, forget it. I don't know. I wasn't going to ask though. you, Ruth. No, you, you never knew? Never knew. It was knew. just a company no, bought stock? But stocking. it paid off. Yeah. Was it tough to be a young girl in those days trying to make it in this business? Were, there, uh, were you ever asked to compromise yourself to get anywhere? Um, well, I don't know. I think maybe I asked to compromise myself. I'm not sure if anybody <laughs> asked me. But I tell you, I thought about that for a long time. You know, there are all these jokes about, uh, did you have to get chased around the manager's desk before you could get the job? Well, I guess we did. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, I ran pretty hard. And uh, I'm wondering in later life, Maybe if I'd slowed down, I'd have gotten somewhere further. I'm not sure about that runaround business. <laughs> you had a love for green silk, somebody told me. Well, green satin. Green satin. Beautiful green satin, yes. I had a love for it. I, what I really had a love for was remnants. You know, I was in a one-night stand company, and uh, we were playing nothing but one-nighters. That's when I played Winona. And we were in a place in, uh, w in uh, Wisconsin, and uh, Portage, Wisconsin. And uh, all the uh, actors in the company, we went, uh, checked into the hotel, all of them, probably no good. And then we went over to the theater, not very good, and saw which dressing room we had. I was the leading lady, so if I didn't have number one make a big kick with the stage manager, and you think, well, in Portage, Wisconsin, what dressing room is any good anyway, so why number one? Number one is nearest to the stage, nearest to the bathroom. Very important, and also means that you're a big shot. So after that, the, lead, the actresses and the company, we all went over to the department store because, you know, a department store, oh, Lord, I think here, Jordan Marsh, Filene's, what those stores meant to me. I once got a hat marked down to 25 cents in Filene's here in the basement. Oh, black with a white ribbon around. I wish I had it now. <laughs> but anyway, we all went over to this department store in Portage, and you see beautiful furs. You say, oh, mine. The uh, uh, sales girl comes up and she says, uh, can I help you? And you say, uh, no, uh, uh, just looking around, just looking around. And wonderful, wonderful pearls, kind of like these. And they said, no, I'm just looking, just looking. But then where we didn't just look was the remnant counter. Everybody could afford a remnant. And that was bundles of silk, bundles of chiffon, bundles of this and that. And on it was marked the price and saying it was a yard and three quarters. It was half a yard, all this. So this most beautiful green satin. I bet you thought I'd lost track of what no, I'm talking I knew about. Where you were. <laughs> well anyway, the green satin and it said seven eighths of a yard and it was a nice price. I don't remember the price. And I looked at it and I held it up and I said, I think I'll get that. And Grace Hale, one of the actresses, said, What 
could you do with seven eighths of a yard? It isn't big enough to make a blouse. What are you going to do? I said, mm, I think I'll, I think I'll make a pair of drawers. And Grace Hale said, drawers? You think she was head of the Christian Endeavor Society? <laughs> drawers? She said, green satin drawers. Well, you know, this was 1916. So if you had on green satin drawers, no one saw them but your husband or if you got run over. So <laughs> what do you care about that? So I was talked out of it, damn it. I get talked out of so few things. I got talked out of it. But about 30 years later, I was in, in uh, Minneapolis in the department store, and I was giving a speech, and I told this. And a, at about half an hour later into my speech, a man came running down the aisle, and just as I was saying, if you believe in things, they come true. Maybe you have to wait a long time, but if you believe, if you believe, believe, it's a great strength, believe. And he came running down the aisle with a pair of green satin drawers. He'd have the <laughs> sense to go down to the lingerie department and buy some Aww, green satin drawers. And so I, right today, I have green satin drawers. Oh, I haven't right. got them on, but no. <laughs> well, okay. The book, Shady Lady, is a terrific book, and you know, it's had great reviews. Wonderful reviews. And, uh, and wonderful sales, too. We thought uh, that we would show everyone, someone remarking about your book. I think you know this man. I, I think you know him, but he had some things to say about your Good. book. Let's watch. Worry not who will fill the shoes of the late Anita Luce. How Ruth much longer Gordon, is this going to go, Garson? Half a second. Oh, Ruth okay. Gordon, novelist with pizzazz, has now arrived. Already a star, playwright, author of scintillating theatrical memoirs, recipient of countless awards, survivor supreme, and general good egg, she now proves she can tell a story with the best of them. Is there no end to her ability? She's no higher than a camellia bush, but her talent is treetop tall. Oh, that's the truth. Oh, that is great. That man is Garson Kanan. Oh, and your didn't he do that beautifully? He, he did it for a long time beautifully. <laughs> he kept reading didn't and reading. Long and reading. to me. I wish he'd do oh. it right over again. No, it has had great reviews, Ruth. And I'll yes. tell you, you are an inspiration to all. Uh -huh. um, we've been doing a series all week on aging parents, and we know that you have a lot to say about your age and how you feel. You're very proud of it. Will you come back later in the show and sure, talk to me about to. that? All right, we'll do that. Shady Lady is the book.